I was fortunate enough to have a second career sailing in the Caribbean and I found out living on a catamaran you have a big panorama window 360 degrees around and I really like that because you're constantly in contact with everything around you so I started looking at buying a catamaran but they were all very expensive and if you sail the big seas I, I'm all comfortable sailing, sailing a single hull my long time preference has been, been to have a junk schooner there I was lucky enough to find Lona it was it was a sheer stroke of luck and I, actually I was in love when I saw her first I knew there might be some challenges sail around the world it was it was perfect for me I sat in the Caribbean and found a boat that was in Spain owned by an Israeli registered in Delaware in the US having been built by two Germans in Germany bought by a day in Spain now she's going to have the adventure across the Atlantic she's so well built she's bulletproof she's been standing here in Spain for two years while I worked on another catamaran but now now's the time the nerd and the bitch This is us in Amarimar and we are walking to Lona right now for our first walk around, what did you call yeah, it? Yeah, walk around just to see all the things that we would have, could have, should have, have time for doing, what we need, yeah. what we want. Ping pong around. Yeah, just saying. ping pong around the uh, possibilities. So, yeah. Well, he said. <laughs> now we're entering the dry dock where low noise industrial beauty all around <laughs> yeah have uh, folks standing out with some horse on the side i'm not sure i'm ready and if you have to grab that because it's warm you don't want to come around and shake me but the car is coming our 100 meters of Branch banking new package disappeared. So I just had to go to the, the head of the uh, shipyard and say, um, Sorry, have you seen my anchor chain? <laughs> White one standing right here looks like a rank sign as well. And it has this cute well, manatee or whatever that is. Yeah. And the double keel so it can stand by itself and doesn't need any support. Really convenient. Plus, shadow graph. And uh, so you get all the advantages of a long queue without any of the disadvantages. So like a behind the scenes view, like you see stuff that's normally underwater. Yeah. yeah. Like this, 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 this little thing here, what, what is that? That's a bow thruster. It's so that oh, you can turn the boat. I heard that word before, just I never knew what it looked like. Yeah. Because I've never seen this. It's used in port. Um, so it's just a little propeller that can push the front of the boat around. If you have wind from the side, it's really beneficial. Yeah. So. And what is that thing that looks like a, a, a walk? <laughs> That's a barbecue. Is it? Yeah, it is. Nice. Probably a charcoal barbecue. <laughs> That's really cool. It, sometimes it comes in gas and then it has uh, the gas coming in from below in a, or just a um, bottle of gas hanging. But that Things one... people come up with. Oh, and there she is. There Our she is. beautiful yeah. Lona. And I took off some of the solar cells that were all more or less dead and not worth it um there's two left the one in the back uh that's about 100 watts but we can replace it with a new and more energy efficient one uh about 300 watts and uh i put the triporium up there's actually i found out tailored to to fit this yeah i don't know structure structure yeah and above that we'll put 300 watts in each side uh, each on their uh, charging regulator with the advantages that you have shade on one side you still get everything you can out of the other one and it'll uh, the own little regulator on the other side with the shade will still try to bring out whatever electricity you can the only big purchase we made was the ladder 
<laughs> it's probably the most important thing you can buy. So this one is like a telescope, so it folds down, weighs eight kilos, folds down to about this length. Mm. And uh, it's this way convenient for small dogs. All the way up. The short walk around of Lona, she is welded up in aluminium plate. And it's six millimeters thick. So she can take quite a bashing. She's welded up uh, by a professional yard that does nothing but that. So even though on the inside she's amateurish, uh, all this is quality. Um, you can always tell a steel and aluminium boat if you look along it, you'll see it wobbles a little, and it's partly some of the weldings of the springs on the inside. So if you look at it here, now it in the water, it really doesn't matter. And she has some really important features that I like. Apart from the hull, she has twin keels. So if we look under. She has actually aluminium keels that are welded on with lead inside. That helps her ride. And if you look at the keels, you can see the asymmetrical. So the one that actually sticks into the water the deepest is the one that's riding uh, with the hydrodynamics. And as they are slightly offset, that means that it helps it sail straight, i.e. less leeway. I've seen a lot of calculations and there's a lot of speculation. It seems like she sails almost as well as if she had a very deep fin keel. But we can go in where the water is not very deep and we can even go in and dry her out if there's a lot of tide and do bottom painting, painting and scraping and shit without having to go to a yard. So that's both convenient and cheap. You don't need any legs or anything, you just sail in, let her beach, let the tide go out, scrape her out, tide comes in, goes out again, and then you can paint her. So it's dry. Now, if you look at the hull, uh, it's raw from the bottom paint up to where it's painted beige, and you can see the paint is coming off. And that's one of the side effects of having different stainless steel things bolted onto her. Uh, it actually produces hydrogen under the paint. The paint comes off. It's not really dangerous or anything like that. It just means we'll have to scrape her down and paint her again. And we'll paint her white to keep the heat out. And probably paint uh, the deck with some anti-skid paint so you don't fall off when she's healing and wet. I was dreaming of replacing all the stainless but I think, yeah, it'll just stay and we'll have to repaint her at some point. It's easy, it's not expensive. If you walk to the rear, rudder with a skate. So the rudder is relatively protected and strong. It's not fancy and it's a little small, but it's cool enough because any good boat, and especially a John Greg schooner, should balance really easily um, so you actually you shouldn't need the rudder for, for sailing very far only in close quarters and we have a bathing platform which I think we're going to enjoy a lot it's also made with stainless steel so it also adds to the paint peeling off but it's good and strong and I think we'll keep it as is and of course the areas if I haven't talked about that before, I'll talk about it again. Our little cell steer that just uses the wind and the water that moves past the boat to steer the boat when we're doing something different. But it's made from cast aluminium and it's strong as an ox. And these elements, they are actually the, the, the heart of of it, the tubes and so on, they're, they're cheap to make, but these ones are very expensive to make the comp. And it needs to be serviced, so we'll send it to the guy in the Netherlands that's doing the areas right now. Get it back, good as new, only slightly tended. Shall we go in? Let's go and see what's inside.
another interesting way to hit your head. Yeah. Oh well. Ooh. So, hey, despite Laura oh. only being 34 foot, she has a race cabin. That means you can stand right here in the pantry and make food and still, you know, be in connection with nature, the waves, or, you know, people on other boats. It's good for safety and it's also good for comfort. And we have a race city now. I open it up to clean out so we can build a center cabin. However, oh, yeah, it's gonna be one of the major parts of this reconstruction work. It is. Raced to tea is one of the big attractions of this otherwise very small boat because when you sit here and we can seat comfortably six but eight in a pinch and have a little party hang out you know you're still in full connection 360 degrees around and these these fall down I, I had to open up and and take out all the stuff that was down there so you can better see how we're going to be constructed. So a center cabin in the middle of the boat, low down, is where the motion is the nicest. Instead of having, you know, up and down, you just rock a little. And uh, so you sleep better, and that means a better quality of life. And We like sleep. <laughs> we like sleep. Yeah, sleep, sleep is important, especially on a boat where you might have to get up in the middle of the night to change something and when you sail short-handed on a small boat, sleep is super important. So whatever sleep you get, it's got to be good. Good mattress, good air, and preferably in the middle of the boat and low down. Here's the kitchen. As you can see, we have a lot of space in front of the kitchen. Here's a chart table. That was very important when everything was with paper charts. We were, we were at the teapot. That's super interesting. That was the, yeah, belonged to the previous right. owner, and there's a places on it where, where they had been. Yeah. Cartagena, they have a really good yard if you have to have something repaired. Ibiza, Mallorca, Menorca, it's all the better hours. And Porto Conte, I haven't been there. And that fish, I mean, that's some impressive artistry <laughs> right there. Yeah, so that's what it's like when you take on a boat, there's tons of things. Some of the things we're going to throw out, some of the things we're going to renovate and some of the things we're just going to leave. One of the things is uh, that's actually a um, pretty awesome isotherm fridge here. It's only 50 liters but I turned it on a few days ago when I came back to the boat and uh, it's been running and it is nice and cold and it seems to be not consuming a lot of energy. Put a MPPT converter on the one solar panel that's actually running and uh, if you take out, it has a little um, Bluetooth dongle attached. So if, dongle. Yeah, dongle. That would um, be the same in Danish. Dongle. <laughs> right, so you turn on the Bluetooth and you pull up the, oh, the app. And it comes up with the device list. Now I only have the one. And it connects. And what's MPPT? Multipoint power tracker, something like that. What it does is it finds out the voltages where the solar panel delivers the most power. And uh, right now it's actually delivering 74 watts, which is not bad for a 100 watt panel. And here's the voltage that the panel is cheated to see. It's, it sees 16, 15, 16 volts, and the battery is charged at a little more than 14, 14.1. 14 it means that the current that it's delivering up there is four, yeah, four point something, but it's almost five actually delivered to, uh, to the battery. Cool. And if you go into the history, you can actually see how much it has charged over the different days. Yeah, those are probably and rainy days. Yeah, and also the maximum, actually, uh, here there's a hundred watt hours and that's all depending on how much consumption we've had. Now I turned on the fridge. So going from 90, 180 watts per day now we are, oh, watt hours, we are now getting 300, 370 watt hours because the fridge is running. Okay, that's a pretty cool feedback about our consumption. Yeah, it is. So we're going to have a more complex system once it's fully set up, but this is just a little 100 euro thingy. And, but it's big enough that it'll actually fit one of the 300 watt panels because we're running a 24 watt, oh, sorry, 24 watt. 
Then we have big walking area down here. And you can walk around the corner. Look at all that wasted floor. And uh, here's the storage. And in here is the bathroom, the toilet, and in here is the floor cabin. This is a junk rigged schooner, so it has two sails, they're actually of equal size and it's very easy to manage for shorthand sailing. So, and they're beautiful red sails, better, better protected against the UV rays and break down sail, but as it's a junk rig the uh, tension in the cloth is so low it actually doesn't matter. Oh, well, yeah, you'll get the tech talk another day. <laughs>